Hi everybody. In 2003, Jeff Bezos delivered an amazing TED talk on the startup bubble of the world. And in his talk, he spoke about which kind of investors and entrepreneurs actually make money during the startup bubble. In his talk, he mentions the story of the iconic California gold rush. 1849, in that gold rush, they took over 700 million dollars worth of gold out of California. It was very real. Did you know that in 1848, a bunch of miners found a ton of gold while constructing a mill in California? Do you know how much gold they found? They found 323,000 kilograms of gold, and the moment they found it, millions of people left from all across the country and flooded to extract. Like this gold. News of gold in California took the country by storm. Headlines splashed across the front pages of newspapers from California all the way to New York City. People are hearing these stories from California of people picking up in a morning more money than they'd make in a year. And out of these thousands of miners. Many of them died fighting. Many of them got their gold stolen, and only a few of them were actually able to walk away with a lot of gold. Now, if I tell you the story and I ask you who made maximum money out of this gold rush, what would your answer be? Those strong, powerful miners who could beat other gold miners, right? Well, as it turns out, the people who actually made money were not gold miners, but the people who sold shovels and horses to these miners, the people who sold meat and soup to these miners, and even people who sold clothes to these miners. Planning on selling shovels, <laughs> and the first person who sold shovels got a lot more gold than the person who had to dig for it. In fact, one of these pan sellers was none other than Levi Strauss, who went on to build the iconic Levi's company. And if you look at the story very, very closely, this is literally the representation of every other business revolution that has popped up in the history of the world. During the automobile revolution, a lot of companies rose and fell, but the ones who actually made money, regardless, were the ones who made nuts and bolts, were the ones who sold oil, and even the steel companies that supplied steel to these automobile companies. This is what you call as second-order business, where you build a business to help other businesses become more competitive. So ever since I started studying this concept of shovel seller. I was fascinated to find these shower sellers in the modern day context and I wanted to understand what goes into building a million dollar business in today's context and you know what guys this is when I found a company that sends OTPs and text messages for companies like Zomato and Uber and makes more than 400 crore rupees in revenue every single year and all they did was replace complex telecommunication systems with a simple software That's it. We enable businesses to embed communication in their applications. So here we are, uh, you know, 200 employees, three years now profitable, several thousand customers, multiple office locations. So if you're an entrepreneur looking for an idea, this could be a huge opportunity for you. And if you're an investor, this could help you understand another gold mine space properly. So in this episode today, let's dig deep and understand this shovel seller called Plevo, which went on to generate more than 400 crores in revenue by just enabling OTPs, voice calls and text messages. What exactly was their business strategy that helped them become so successful and profitable? What are the problems that they solved for giant companies like Zomato and Uber? And most importantly, what are the business lessons that we need to learn from the rise of this iconic company? This is a story that dates back to early 2000s. During this time, software was gaining popularity as a new age platform, and everybody wanted to go on a website or have an app for their company. But with the growing online market, customer engagement became a big pain for these companies because in the offline space, if you wanted to service your customers, all you had to do was open up a physical store, and customers would walk in so that you can service them. But the moment things became online, it became super complicated because of three reasons. The first issue was the manual handling of calls. So So when thousands of customers called, the companies had to either hire more workers in their BPOs or they had to make the customers wait for a very long time. And we all know how irritating it is to wait on service calls, right? So these companies were at a very tough spot where they either had to cut down on their profits and hire more workers, or they had to disappoint their customers and sacrifice their market share. So do you realize this is a very tough spot for any company to be in? Secondly, these call volumes are quite irregular. So today you could get ten thousand calls. To Tomorrow you could get one thousand calls, and day after tomorrow, if something goes terribly wrong, you could even get one lakh calls. So maintaining a workforce was very difficult because the volume was quite irregular. And in spite of all of this, the experience of the customer was terrible because they more often than not had to wait for a very long time to have their call answered. So these were the problems that Venki and Michael noticed. 
and that is the reason why they started this company to build a software that would make it much easier to create experiences like the IVR or interactive voice response. And this is something that we all have used, right? When you call Domino's, you immediately hear, welcome to Domino's, press 1 to order, press 2 to track your order, or press 3 for other help. So if you press 1, a staff member will ask you for your pizza choice. If you press 2, the system recognizes your number and updates you on your order status. So basically, they created a software that made it super easy to create an automated response IVR system. And this simple solution solved three major problems in the market. Number one, it cut down the time of the companies because they didn't have to build their own systems or set up their own software. Secondly, it brought down the cost drastically because the company saved a ton on labor costs. And lastly, now customers could get help 24-7 and companies could provide customer service without a big budget. This is how Plevo got their first set of customers. And then they moved on to spot another problem in the market, which was the decline in email marketing as a channel for consumers. In the US, the open rate for an email was 20% and the response rate was 6%. Whereas for SMS and MMS, the open rates were 98% and response rates were 45%. And to top it all off, 90% of SMS messages were read within just 3 minutes. Now the problem in the early 2000s was that these websites were not linked with telecommunications. So today while it is very easy to get an OTP from a website, back then computers were not connected to the telecommunication world and they were so disconnected that it was very complicated to make them work together. So Plevo began engineering and introduced SMS engagement solutions for these giant companies by breaking customer engagement into three blocks, customer acquisition, customer service and loyalty hooks. And if you're planning to build a SaaS company, this is a huge market that you could tap into and help new businesses manage their customers better. So let's understand this journey better and you will understand the gap better. The first stage is customer acquisition. In this stage, the goal is to get the attention of the potential customers and turn them into actual customers. For example, when you log into an app, the OTP message helps you instantly log in and sign up into the app. Similarly, when you sign up for an online course, you get a WhatsApp or text message with your login details. So this way the communication becomes very effective. In fact, we've been using email for communication masterclass and we've been facing a lot of issues where students don't even check their emails and that creates a communication gap which then requires supporting. So the next time you log into communication masterclass, you will get all the messages and login details on WhatsApp. This is the first level of customer engagement which is customer acquisition process. Then comes the next level of customer engagement which is customer servicing. Here the aim is to keep the customers happy while they're engaging with your product or service. And the best example of the same is Zomato. Now imagine this guys, you get your Zomato order from McDonald's and it's having spillage issue. As in, the coke has leaked out and it has also spoiled the burger. Now in an hangry mood, when you call the customer support and you hear this, what would you feel? We're sorry, all of our representatives are still assisting other customers. Please remain on the line as we value your call. You will feel absolutely terrible, right? This is something that Zomato and Swiggy just cannot afford because if their competitors do a better job at customer servicing, then all their customers will start moving towards the competitors. So guess what? This is where Plevo came out with a very intelligent, wonderful and yet a simple solution to solve this problem. You know what they did? They studied thousands of customer queries that these food apps get and they segregated them in such a way that 99% of these queries could be solved without the need of the customer support team as in without the need of the call center. For example, after the food order is delivered and the customer wants to reach out to the customer support team, why would he do that? When Plevo looked into all the queries, they found out that there could be 10 possible reasons, starting from order not received to a safety incident to a spillage issue to a payment related query. And once they tap into one of these options, let's say they tap into spillage issue, it will ask you for a photo. And in the back end, it will quickly check how worthy of a customer you are. So if Zomato system understands that I've been placing orders worth 10,000 rupees every month and I report a spillage issue with an order value of just 500 rupees, there is a 99% probability that I am not lying. So automatically the money is refunded and the problem is solved. Otherwise, imagine if the same thing had to happen on a call. They would start with what's your order number to asking all the questions and then they would give me the refund which will take at least 10 minutes. And more importantly, it would need a human on the payroll which is very costly for the business. So the food app would rather give me a refund than pay salaries and rent for a call center workforce. 
and this is something that even we are implementing for the communication masterclass soon where we want to eliminate the customer queries to such an extent as in we want to solve the customer queries to such an extent that 99% of the queries will not require customer support team at all so do you realize this solution is so revolutionary that in the first process it was extremely time consuming it required very high labor cost and on top of that while the customer went through the experience the experience was not so good and there was like a 99% probability that the customer would leave angry but in the second process where plevo came up with a solution in that process number one the customer leaves very happily number two there is a 99% reduction in the labor cost which the company has to pay for the call centers and most importantly this entire process happens in a hassle free manner and in a very quick way so this way the likelihood of the customer being happy is very very high this is the massive value add that plevo brought to the table of companies like uber and zomato and now they are adding ai to this layer of software which can learn from past conversations and keep on improving its response on the go this is a second stage of customer engagement which is customer servicing and this brings us to the third part which is loyalty hooks in simple words you must have seen these clever messages that zomato sends you right they say that it's been a long time since you ordered from zomato so here's a 20% discount so that you can place your next order via zomato so this type of communication keeps the brand on top of the customers minds and more importantly you are more likely to repeat ordering via these apps because of these kinds of communications so this is a tool of customer retention this is how plevo ended up solving this problem of customer engagement for zomato and uber now some people might ask over here if plevo could do it then every other startup would have been able to do it right then what was so special about plevo and here's where you need to understand the difference between how competition works in b2c space and b2b space you see in the b2b business you can play the brand game very easily where people would buy a nike not because of its comfort but because it is nike and you can play the emotional game in the b2c segment and stay in the market but when it comes to b2b which is the business to business market the only thing that matters is your ability to add value to the client so if two companies offer the same service the client will always go with the one with the highest value and value in this case is a combination of three variables product service and cost in case of plevo the founders went beyond their limits to build a very very powerful ecosystem which was very difficult for others to build and it was based on three pillars software technology globally hosted cloud infrastructure and worldwide telco connection so let's understand this and you will understand how competition works in the b2b space let's start with software long story short they built a robust bug free software that could run without failing and as much as it sounds easy we been scouting for great software products for 3 years now guys and trust me finding software that works without failing at skill is a big big deal in fact while i was researching for the zeroda case study i spoke to nitin nikhil and a lot of his teammates and that's when the associate vice president of zeroda told me that there are some things that you can't buy with money and a powerful and smooth software is one of them so plevo built such an amazing software that it was very difficult for their competitors to mimic the second challenge and the barrier to entry in this industry is globally hosted cloud infrastructure in simple words cloud infrastructure is like a set of virtual computers that run on the internet so instead of having your files or software run on your personal computer or a physical server in an office they are stored on a set of virtual computers and you can access them from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection so it's like having a group of powerful computers available to you all the time without needing to have them physically with you Now the catch with this globally hosted cloud infrastructure is that if Plevo has the software in a cloud infrastructure located in the US and an Indian user calls the customer service to get connected because the cloud infrastructure is in the US there could be a 2 second delay in communication this is because the data has to travel back and forth from US to India Now a 2 second delay might not sound that much when it comes to text updates but during a voice phone call a 2 second delay could ruin the calling experience right So what did they do? Very simple. They needed to distribute the hosting of the cloud infrastructure at multiple locations globally. For example, Indian, Bangladeshi and Sri Lankan customers can be hosted from India server. US and Canadian customers can be hosted in the US and all of Europe could be hosted from Germany or UK. So the intelligent usage of the cloud infrastructure was a critical factor in ensuring seamless communication especially for real time applications like voice communication. So Plevo has its software running for customers in 7 cloud data centers across 5 continents. 
Now, this is not something that the clients can create or run by themselves because it relies on the unique software algorithm that Plio has built for itself. This is the reason why it's a very big barrier to entry. And the last barrier to entry that they developed with time is their network effect of telecom operators all across the world. Now listen to this very very carefully. Let's say a person whose cellular network is Airtel wants to call an Uber driver who uses Jio. Similarly, an Uber customer in the US using Verizone might want to call an Uber driver using AT&T. Now, if you've used Uber, you know that the call happens in such a way that your number is not visible to the driver and the driver's number is not visible to the customer. And this happens when you make the call via the Uber app. This is what you call as number masking. Now, to allow such high quality calls to happen along with number masking via the Uber app, Uber has to sign agreements with all four of these telecom companies to make this situation possible. So Uber has to sign a contract with AT&T, Verizon, Airtel and Jio. Now, if this has to be done at scale, it is a mammoth challenge. Why? Because Uber operates in 72 countries. So even if we take a minimum of just two telecom operators per country, that's 144 agreements that have to be signed individually with all these companies. This is not only expensive, but also time consuming because it roughly takes three to six months to onboard a single carrier. So this is again a huge barrier to entry. So here's where Plevo solved this problem by spending years into just partnering with telecom companies globally. This ensured that their services like IVR, call recording and OTBs can be used globally without any hassle. Today, Plevo has built over 100 direct relationships over the past 12 years and can connect over 1600 carriers all across the world. Now, whenever we present a case study like this about a new age company doing something really crazy and disruptive, the one question that I often get asked by you guys is, is this company even profitable? Well, let's look into that numbers to answer this question. Plevo makes money in three ways, guys. Firstly, they make money via monthly recurring fee for software, which is based on the number of users. Secondly, the customers are charged a nominal 50 paise per minute. So if an IVR call runs for five minutes, 2.5 rupees is charged. Thirdly, they make money via monthly rental for the phone numbers, which Plevo provides for communication. But the catch over here is that while their competitors costs stand at 50 to 80 percent of the revenue, for Plevo, it's less than 55 percent. Why? Because unlike other competitors, Plevo does not use the services of the middlemen to have the contracts and agreements with the telecom players. So they approached these companies directly and brought down the cost. And this solid foundation has led to such an insane growth that today they spread across 50 countries, employ 300 people and generate an annual revenue of more than 400 crores from customers across 190 countries. And now they've been profitable for seven long years. This is how Plevo became the king of the underrated and hidden industry of customer engagement. And this brings us to the most important part of the episode and that are the business lessons that we need to learn from the rise of Plevo. Lesson number one, every time there is a gold rush in the business world, while most people will try to become gold miners, you need to realize that there is an equally lucrative opportunity in selling shovels to the gold miners. In this case, while many startups rush to go online, Plevo helped them with customer engagement and became a 400 crore company. Lesson number two, if you're somebody who's looking to spot a huge gap to build your business, always remember, every time there is a political, economical, environmental, legal, technological or social revolution, there will be new necessities that will emerge with the progress of the civilization. And this progress could help you find enormous gaps in the market. In this case, when the tech revolution happened, customer servicing and engagement went from offline to online. And that created a huge gap for Venki and Michael to build a million dollar company. And lastly, you always remember, cutting the middlemen is one of the most frowned upon, but perhaps the most effective cost cutting strategies ever. So if these middlemen are eating away a large chunk of your profits, it is time to get rid of them and become more independent. It would be a lot of hard work. I understand how the B2B business is and how difficult it is to cut out the middlemen because you are at the risk of losing all of your business. But people, if you do that, and become more efficient, that itself becomes a very big barrier to entry for you. So if you look back, East My Trip eliminated the brokers, Dell eliminated the distributors and Plevo has eliminated the third party intermediaries to cut down cost and achieve profitability and more importantly, build a barrier to entry with their own channels. Therefore, in-house operations, although demanding, can help you cut costs and achieve insane profitability. That's all from my side today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.